Tapper says, are you ready to stop impulse buying and emotionally spending? I know I am. Hello, everybody. On this episode, we're going to be talking how to stop impulse buying and emotionally spending. With inflation and prices, it's getting kind of hard for the day-to-day -day life and keeping within your budget. So I feel like it's very important that if you're struggling with this, these are some tips that are going to help you curb those spending habits. Now, when I was in my 20s, I graduated college in 2005. But through those years, the first half of the 2000s, I had a full-blown shopping addiction. Now, I was already hoarding. I already had those tendencies since a child. The shopping addiction did not develop until I was in college, post that very abusive boyfriend who mentally, physically, emotionally tore me apart. So the shopping was after I had gotten away from him and it was a newer coping mechanism to deal with the trauma that I had with him because I never emotionally processed it. I just internalized it. Nobody knew how badly I was being abused when I was 17 and 18. I was fully into this material girl world because I was trying to prove to everybody else my self-worth and how beautiful I really was. That's how I was dealing with the low self-esteem and trauma that this ex-boyfriend had done to me. So of course, I had a charge card and I went shopping and I bought clothes and jewelry and makeup. And so as you can imagine, as I went through college, a couple years of not budgeting or being aware of what you're spending, I had racked up $10,000 worth of credit card debt. So there were two major events that had happened in my life that helped me change those deep spending habits. Now, the first one was very important because there was an event at my college about how to curb your shopping addiction and what the brain actually went through while you were shopping. Now, I wish I remembered her name. I wish I remembered the resources that she used when she hosted this, but let me tell you how much it really shifted my mindset. She had said that when you are at the store and you find something that you absolutely love, the dopamine chemical peaks in your brain in the anticipation of buying it. The moment you see it, go towards it and hold it. That dopamine chemical has already peaked. The shopper's high has already happened in that moment. Once you hold it, start continuing shopping or going to the register, your dopamine levels are already dropping. But you think if I buy this item, that peak of happiness and joy and escapism and just pure happiness, you think it's going to sustain for a long period of time because you're buying this item. The truth is, it's already on its way out. It's already gone. Even by the time you purchase it at the register, the levels are already more than halfway dropped. And by the time you come home, the shopper's high is completely gone. And that is when buyer's remorse sets in. And the speaker went on to say that if you just window shop, get that shopper's high, but not buy it at all, you're still raising those levels of your dopamine and it's feeling like a reward without going into deep 
debt. So when I had heard her talk about this, I thought, you know, this is actually very empowering now that I understand how my brain works because the buyer's remorse and almost depression was really set in after I realized that I had racked up $10,000 worth of credit card debt, which was a lot of money in 2004. And I wanted to test it out. So I had gone to the mall and I went into my favorite, favorite stores. I picked up certain things that I loved and that I really wanted to buy so badly, but I actually did put it back. I had enough self-control to put it back. I told myself that if I really want this bad enough, I'll just come back tomorrow and buy it. And don't you know that after I came home the next day, I had no desire to go back and buy it. Yeah, I still liked them, but it was not that same feeling the moment that I was there holding the item. So I knew at that point that there was truth behind what she had said. Because for me, this was a full on addiction and I knew it took a lot of energy for me to put those items back. I couldn't just window shop at first. I really had to stay out of my trigger stores because it was an addiction. And I just really had to enjoy the things that I had. And even with online shopping, you can do the same process, whether you add it to your wish list, because I probably have 10,000 things on my Amazon wish list now, <laughs> or you know, you just stay off the websites completely. Now, the second event that really helped me change that shopping addiction was around that same time. For my birthday, my best friend Jen had given me this wonderful basket of stuff and it had this book on how to improve yourself in all areas. And in the finance section of that book, it had talked about lowering debt, being debt free and saving money. And it suggested that you should do once a week, one no spend day when you spend absolutely positively no money. And it wasn't even for food or gas. Nothing came out of that bank account. And I was happy to say that I was very successful in that one no spend day during the week. Month number two came and I pretty much had it down, planning to not spend any money for one day a week. I added two days a week. And then over the course of some months, I was able to increase it to three and even four days a week. Now, back then I didn't track it on like paper or marked anything down. I was just kind of mindful that I was like, yeah, today's Wednesday. I don't got much going on. It's going to be a no spend day. But because I was including those no spend days and also staying out of my trigger stores, that's when I started really paying off that debt. And I'm very happy to say that it probably took me about a good year and a half to pay down all that credit card debt. So of course, this brings me to the no spend challenge for March 2023, because to this day, I still continue doing the no spend challenge. If you're following Dave Ramsey, it has helped me go to baby step six in his uh, baby step financial process. And to do the new spend challenge, all you have to do is color in the days that you spend no money. Now, if it's easier for you to color in the days that you didn't spend on any wants, but you did have to fill up the tank with gas, you can still color it in. Or if you wanna go cold turkey and you spent absolutely no money that day, you can do it that way too. I also go with more positive rules and things that are attainable with my behaviors. I just want to tell you that even if you are changing your habits and you had one no spend day that week, that you are successful. This is progress. 
you are taking those action steps to change. We're not going to completely change these baseline habits in one day. It takes baby steps. It takes encouragement and accountability. Now, this is what has helped me completely recover in my shopping addiction. And my hope and my prayer is that this also helps you too. But what's most important is to please give yourself grace during this. We tend to be a little hard on ourselves. I know I totally was too. But I want you to know that as long as you're taking the action steps, you're already successful. And my hope, and my prayer, is that this video motivated and encouraged you to help heal and soothe and recover from your shopping addiction or spending habits too.